Hello Twitch and welcome. If you're going to be tuning in, you will see that we have had to adjust our schedule this week. Um, the Valentine's holiday threw a couple wrenches at us, so we have done some adjustments. And now rather than um, 8 Central Standard Time, we will be moving that up to 6.30 Central Standard Time. So we hope this works with uh, multiple people's schedules and that you're able to tune in and follow us on our new schedules. So be sure to check out the new schedules. Uh, when this moves into YouTube, we will post that there as well. Of course, YouTube is a couple of weeks behind, so we're hoping there isn't too much lag between YouTube and people coming to check out our Twitch channel. Uh, these VODs will be on demand, so hopefully people who um, move from YouTube to watching the Twitch VODs get the update that the schedule is updating, and we will be making that adjustment starting tonight. So we're a couple of minutes early just because I wanted to kind of point that out, and this is the pre-show. So generally for our Wednesday night inspirations, character building from a mini. I try to pick out a miniature um, a little bit ahead of time so that I, I'm i not thinking about it throughout the week. I try to do it right before the show, but with enough time to uh, really pick out a decent miniature anyhow. So this bit of pre-show here, we are going to open the bag that's called Heroes. Save that tag. We're going to dump a couple out. And we're going to build a character. So I am just going to attempt to do that one because I believe, yeah, that's one that I have two of. So that's what we're going to do. I've got two of that miniature. Let's do it. The miniature that we will be building is a duplicate. I have a lot of guilt because I have not yet still painted the first miniature that we did on this channel, which was the Cleric. If you have not checked out that video, please make sure you jump back onto our YouTube. It should be on the YouTube channel and ready to go. So that is the bag of miniatures that I have marked just as heroes. It's all from Bones Kickstarter 5. All of these miniatures were in the Kickstarter at various levels, most of them with the core set or the Dungeon Dwellers um, or some of the other expansions, the Greek Odyssey, uh, Dark Depths, on and on. Um, but let's check and see what we got here. Open this bag here. Watch my time. See, we're still a couple minutes ahead of time. Let's talk about the stuff that I have out here ready to go. I've got 4d6 because I decided we're going to roll for the stats. I've got my player's handbook. Now I can grab some of the other handbooks if I wanted to. I've got just a blank character sheet from Wizards of the Coast. I just printed out a bunch of these and that's what we'll be using. Um, for the character, for the player characters. I have my monster sheets that I use personally um, that you can get on my Patreon page as a download. And I have just a pencil, just because I like to use pencil when I'm filling out paper character sheets. Now at some point I'm probably gonna do this on D&D Beyond. And probably not tonight. Um, but one of the upcoming shows, I will build the character on D&D Beyond. I use D&D Beyond a lot to build characters, just because I can do it fast and quickly. And I've got unlimited characters that I can do so that I can try out different combinations of both races and classes and uh, tweaking them all different ways based on the materials that I select um, to use. So at some point, I will do one on D&D Beyond course, in our last um, review video, Tammy built a character on D&D Beyond live on camera, 
uh, as we were talking about character sheets and kind of reviewing and rating the character sheets as well as the websites. You can download them free. This character sheet, just Wizards of the Coast. Um, if you go to Wizards of the Coast, you can download a set of character sheets, a couple different formats, so you can do the AL as well as just the standard, and uh, a lot of good fun. So we're at that time. Let's start looking at this miniature. Now, based on the size, this could be a halfling or possibly a gnome. And I see there's no armor. Of course, a lot of times you see those halfling classes really focus on being rogues. And this one's got a big fat coin purse as well as a short sword. A cape with a hood, so it is actually a cloak. I kind of like the way they did this cloak with the um, kind of sleeves. So it's got that upper cape part as well as the cloak itself. Um, miniature itself, this is a bones material. You can see just a couple of little divots here and there. Um, nothing that can't be cleaned up too bad. Um, it, there is a cobblestone on the base. So it's sculpted as cobblestone. Perfect for your city scape and playing in an urban campaign. Or maybe their background is from an urban campaign. Uh, clothing, you can't see a whole lot. There's a shirt and breeches or pants and a wide belt. Looks like there's also something slung, but you don't see a sheath or anything, but there is almost like a bandolier style belt. Now that could be just a regular belt that he's wearing that way. And then big old fat hair and pretty pronounced ears. Um, so that is our Hadling. Let's talk a little bit about, so there's definitely a, a big mold line on this side that'll need cleaned up. And you could possibly paint that as the cloak kind of coming back on itself, but it's similar to what it does here, but that's probably how we'll do it for the cloak part, the lower part. The cape doesn't look too bad. It doesn't carry as much mold line in it. Um, but we're not here to review the miniature itself. We're here to generate a character. So I'm going to put that to the side. Now, if you watched me last week, you uh, saw how I went through and rolled all of the stats first. That's what we're going to start with. We're going to do it live right here, right now. Oh, that was a six, but because it went off, I'm going to re-roll it. Oh, my buckets. Oh, my buckets. So if we drop the lowest, that leaves us a 10. Now you can generate your stats different ways. I'm trying to keep this very um, quick and easy and to the point. So we're just going to roll the stats in order. But uh, depending on what your DM allows, you could uh, juggle them up, make the character that you want. And of course, my method here is just rolling in order, dropping the lowest one. So 46 dropping the lowest. This makes me think of uh, basic. Oh my gosh. Are you seeing how horrible these rolls are? I may need to change out my dice. Wowzer. Look at those stats. Look at those stats. 10, 14, 11, 12, 7, and 8. Whew. Goodness gracious. That's okay. That could be a very interesting character. So, I apologize. I try not to hit the camera. And my, my workbench is pretty cluttered. So, let me get it. a couple of things adjusted here. All right, there are some of the previous ones that we've rolled up or created here on the channel. So let's get right into it. 
And the first thing we need to do is choose our race. Based on our miniature, I am going to say that this is going to be a halfling. So we will pop in halfling. And then the second thing we want to do is a class. And I am going to stick with rogue for this one. I thought up for a moment possibly doing something like a bard. Um, But I think I'm going to just keep it old school with those rolls and everything. Makes a lot of sense. I'm going to put my name here. And of course, we're going to start at level one. All right, here we go. Let's see what we've got for our halfling. We're going to go to right across the way. To halflings and let's see what we get to do here um, so here we go with our traits so dexterity is going to increase by two um, we reach adulthood at 20, so we know that's a personality point. We're going to say our age is 20. Alignment, most avenues are lawful good. Um, however, we're going to come back to that. Size, we know that we are very small. And um, so our size is going to be a small creature. Uh, on average, we are three feet tall and weigh 40 pounds. So we're going to put three feet and 40 pounds. Our speed is 25. Now we do have the lucky feet. Lucky feet, which means we reroll ones on a d20. For attack, ability check, and saves. All right. So we have advantage on saving throws against being frightened. That feat is called Brave. And we have Haveling Nimbleness. So we can move through space of any creature that's a size larger than yours. So anything medium. So Nimbleness. All right, languages, we can speak, read, and write common. And have one. Um, and let's see. And then we've got two sub races, Lightfoot and Stout. So Lightfoot, you easily hide from notice. Um, stouts, you're hardier. So I am going to say, I mean, really the biggest variance is your light foot gets a charisma and naturally resistant. So our charisma is an eight. That would move it up to a nine. For the stout, it would be our constitution would increase by one. And we have advantage on saving throw versus poison and resistance against poison. I'm going to go with the light foot route just because that charisma being good for my rolls. Light foot. All right. And we get 
natural stealth, naturally stealthy. Um, and that's just can attempt to hide even when observed by a medium creatures. All right, eh? so that is our race. Now we're going to go to the classes. And like I said, for me, I am really feeling this miniature is very roguish. Very, very roguish. Now I know a lot of that uh, stereotype stems from The Hobbit and Lord of the Rings. So a lot of that Tolkien-esque with the Hobbits being that kind of default rogue or thief class, uh, the burglar class. Um, and you know what, that's okay. With this fantasy piece, what we can do is take that and make it our own. So for a rogue, we know that's a scoundrel who uses stealth and trickery to overcome obstacles and en enemies. Our hit dice is going to be a D8. And total, we've got one currently. Our primary ability as a rogue is going to be dexterity. So that's our primary. And um, saving throw proficiency, we have dexterity and intelligence, which our intelligence is actually the next best score. So it fits in really well with that um, class combo. And then proficiencies, we've got light armor, simple weapons, We've got hand crossbows, we've got long sword, we've got rapier, and we've got short swords. So that covers that. Let's go to the rogue pages and keep building this haveling out. Oh, one thing I didn't do was when we were looking at the haveling is pick out a name because I was pull that right out of the book. So we are going to have just looking at the names here. This does appear to be a male halfling. Of course, um, with these sculpts, you can definitely say it could be a female. They keep them, uh, most of them anyhow, androgynous enough that you could go either way. But I'm going to go ahead and have this be a male. And this is going to be Alton. And for the family name... Let's go with, uh, let's go with, um, Thorn Gauge, I like. And of course you could find different types of name generators all over the internet if you're not seeing what you like in the player's handbook or any of the additional books. But there we go, Alton. Thorn Gauge is going to be our Havlin Rogue. All right, so let's look and see what we need to start doing. Because we're at first level, our proficiency bonus is going to be a plus two. We do have a 1d6 sneak attack. 1d6. And then we also have Expertise and Thieves Can't. All right. 
right hand. So our hit points at first level is going to be 8 plus constitution modifier. Now that we've got these in, we can start plugging them in. And because I do my normally numbers on top, modifiers on bottom, to show you I'm going to do it backwards now, or what I guess most people would say is regular, depending on how you do it. I'll put the modifiers on top, even though it's so awkward for me. Well, this is actually a minus two. All right. Um, and then our hit points is going to be uh, 1d8 plus constitution, um, or 5 because it's an average now because I don't have a d8 quickly. We're going to use that 5 plus constitution, which is a plus 0. So our current hit points are going to be 5. Pretty low. Pretty low. Um, we've already got our proficiencies. Um, I do need to add these tools. And then skills, we get to choose from acrobatics. Hold on one second. Let me. I just want to look at something here. Make sure I didn't miss any skills based on the race. I don't build too many. No, okay, so we're good. All right, so um, the skills, I get to choose four from acrobatics, athletics, deception, insight, intimidation, Investigation, Perception, Performance, Persuasion, Sleight of Hand, and Stealth. So for this figure here, I'm definitely going to choose Stealth. Stealth is going to be very important for this character staying out of harm's way. I am going to choose Hmm, athletics actually, because that strength based, having proficiency in that is going to be very helpful. Um, so I've got two more to go, two more to go. Investigation, I think for a thief is going to be very important. And actually I'm going to go perception because my wisdom is low. Any help I can get to perception because my passive perception is going to be pretty weak. Um, I think any way I can help that is going to be beneficial. All right, now equipment. Here is equipment that we start with. And again, I want to use the miniature as kind of inspiration on this. So this is where we tend to really need to talk with our GM and make sure that they're okay with the selections that we make. So the first thing I'm going to do is choose a short sword. And I'll get to use my dexterity on that. So that's a plus, oh, actually a plus five because of my proficiency. And then the damage type is 1d6. Um, pierce. And then we get a short bow and quiver or a short sword. Hmm, that's kind of funky. Now I only have one sword. And this figure does not have a short, short bow. So I'm going to elect instead to have a dagger. And they've got it hidden on the back of their belt. And that is a 1d4. Pierce. Um, we also get a burglar pack. 
we could choose a Dungeoneer's pack or an Explorer's pack, but I like sticking with the Burglar's pack. We'll get that here in a bit when we go to the equipment. And then leather armor. Two daggers. So they'll have a total of three. And thieves tools. Now we get for our expertise, we get to choose two skill proficiencies or one of your skill proficiency and your proficiency with these tools and your proficiency bonus is doubled for that. So I am actually going to go for these tools which basically is going to be a plus four because we doubled the pr proficiency and investigation plus four so that one here we can do a plus four and then I'm just going to mark it expert um, then at six level we get another one so for sneak attack um, for that basically if we have advantage on attack roll we get that extra 1d6 of damage of course that is for uh, melee weapon and then thieves can't is just talking in code basically um, that's really it for the uh, for the thief now we need to look at the arch types <coughs> and last time we built a rogue we based it off of the sword coast adventures guide so everything was really more pirate-esque. It was a swashbuckling uh, roamer of the high seas. This one here, I've got a completely different vibe just from the miniature alone. This is somebody who is in one of the major cities, uh, regardless of the system you're playing or the location that you're playing. For me, it would be in my uh, game world, probably the city of Trinity or Orin, possibly, uh, but definitely a city dweller um, with the cobblestone it really makes me feel city and um, so very different from the pirate that we built last time um, so let's see as we get into the third level we need to start thinking about that way are they a thief are they an assassin are they a arcane trickster whatever the like profession that we want to do. Um, I want to start narrowing that in today. Um, I'm not feeling too magically inclined with that, so the uh, trickster is not really feeling it. So I am actually going to go straight up with Thief. Um, and I'm just going to mark that up here. Now a lot of that doesn't really kick into play until third level and beyond, uh, but it gives me a thought of how I'm going to run this character, how I'm going to be playing them at the table. All right, now let's go back into our backgrounds. Of course, I have not yet gotten an inspiration point. Um, so for this part here, for me, this is a big deal. Anytime you're working on these personality traits, this is a very big deal because this is how the GM can go through and connect your character to the story. So I, I pay a lot of attention to this aspect. And again, I'm just using the player's handbook. There are a lot more in some of the other uh, materials that are out there. Um, so generally, you're looking at something that's going to be tied in with Thief so some of the ones are charlatan or criminal. I'm not feeling either one of those, to tell you the truth. Entertainer, a folk hero. I mean, you could almost do the uh, Robin Hood thing on that for a folk hero. A uh, guild artesian. Um, hmm. Mm -hmm. That one actually has me thinking a little bit because... Um, if they are hiding as a guild artesian and knocking off or robbing the competition by night, that could be pretty interesting, I think. 
um, kind of have this air about them that they're, a, you know, a business person and all of that. But then at night they don their cloak and go and rob and pilfer their competition. Could be interesting. I'm leaning that way right now. Um, let's see, a noble. You could almost do a noble who had to turn to thievery out of boredom, maybe. Just a change of pace. They go out at night and, and pilfer goods to uh, see what they can get away with. Urchin, I think, just gets... It's I'm not feeling it. <laughs> well, I'm tempted between the Noble and the Guild Artesian. Noble and Guild Artesian. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to roll a d6. And 1 to 3 is going to be Guild Artesian. 4 to 6 is going to be Noble. 3, a Guild Artesian Thief. How about that? So... <laughs> Our background is going to be a guild artesian. Sometimes things like this just can really add in a lot of content, like I said, for our DM to be able to weave us into the story a little bit better. So here we go. Um, we have insight and persuasion. As skill proficiencies. We are also proficient with one type of artesian tools. Um, so let's say this is going to be, let's say this one here is going to be, um, how about, I like gem cutting. So let's go with the gem cutters tools. Maybe a jeweler. Oh, maybe, yeah, let's do jeweler's tools. Because I think he would go and pilfer the gem cutters to take the gems to put into his own goblets and finery. So jeweler's tools. Um, and that will be his background, is a uh, jewel worker. Um, let's see what else we need. Uh, we get one additional language. And so I am going to say, let's choose Dwarven. A very key language for someone who does, um, you know, gem appraisal and understanding gems and works them into different uh, brooches or brooches, um, cups and goblets. Uh, jewelry, just all different kinds of finery, working those jewelers in, having that insight into Dwarven could be very handy for them. Um, and then, let's see, we also get a letter of introduction from the Sparkling Gem Guild uh, Traveler's Clothes and a pouch containing 15 gold pieces. Let's check that out so far and see if it makes sense. We've got good traveling clothes with the shirt, the breeches, the wide belt. The cloak with cape. Uh, so good traveler's clothes. There's the pouch with the 15 gold pieces. We've got the short sword. Now he's got three daggers and they're hidden. Um, two on the bandolier and then one on the back of the belt. So already the equipment is fitting in really, really well to our character. All right. And then uh, let's see. As a member of the guild, um, you need to know the skills. Of course, that's the proficiencies that we took. Now let's go into the personality traits. So the personality trait, we have eight to choose from here, or we could roll a d8 
and have them assigned at random, but I'm liking where this is going so far, so I'm just going to keep rolling with it. Let me check the time. Oh, we still got half an hour. That's good. All right, so I believe that anything worth doing is worth doing right. I can't help it. I'm a perfectionist. I'm a snob who looks down on those who can't appreciate fine art. Well, that one could be fun, but it could have some challenges at the table. I always want to know how things work and what makes people tick. Full of witty afro aphorisms and have a proverb for every occasion. I'm rude to people who lack my commitment to hard work and fair play. I like to talk at length about my profession. Uh, I don't part with my money easily and will haggle tirelessly to get the best deal possible. And I'm well known for my work. I want to make sure everyone appreciates it. I'm always taken aback when people haven't heard from me. Mm -hmm. No, you know what? I like the part where um, I don't part with my money easily and will haggle tirelessly to get the best deal possible. Because I can see this, this gem setter who is going off to his competitors to steal the gems to put in his things. He's looking to save a buck, basically. It's not that he's out to hurt the other's business. He's out to make the biggest profit he can. So I like that one. Um, and it could be fun to play at the table when we're having to buy drinks and everything uh, at a tavern and my character is trying to come up with reasons that he can't pay. Even if he has the coin in a pouch right there on his belt, um, he does not like to, uh, to part with the money. So I'm just copying it verbatim. Now I'm one of those GMs who, when I have uh, characters, my player characters go into a shop and they're trying to get a discount and everything and they roll a persuasion, you know, you'll have three of them roll a persuasion to try to get, um, you know, the prices lowered or anything like that. I'm one of those GMs who, I love when things like that happen, but I also don't think someone who is a stingy storekeep is all of a sudden going to give a 90% discount to somebody. I would say that maybe it could happen but um i i try not to just give things away even with successes like that it'll move them from being stingy to them maybe saying well here's another place you can try uh, that has better prices best i can do is five percent or maybe well you seem like you're um, looking for a bargain or you've got a sharp eye and this isn't the right a deal for what you're looking for. Here's my extensive inventory, something like that. So that haggling piece could be fun to actually play on the opposite side of the screen. All right, so now we choose the ideals. And here we've got 1d6. I'm going to read through them and then I'm going to roll just to see if, if I would pick the same that I would roll. So let's see. Uh, community, Generosity, freedom, greed, people, and aspiration. Um, I would say I am borderline on aspiration and greed. I'm only in it for the money, um, but I, I'm also, I don't like playing evil characters. So let's check and see. What would the dice say? The dice would say the people. I'm committed to the people I care about, not to ideals. Mm, that would mean a bond, wouldn't it? A bond, a bond. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. So ideals are people. And again, just copying this verbatim. Because again, this is just bones here. This gives us something to work with our GM to start building a story for this character and start developing this character's story. So super important. But if I wanted to talk to the GM and say, 
hey, I'm greedy, but I don't want it to be an evil greedy, even though it could be greedy, but I want it to be more aspirational. Who knows? Excuse me, into bonds. All right. Um, so again, a D6, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to roll for it, but uh, first I'm going to look through. The workshop where I learned my trade is the most important place. I created a great work for someone uh, and then found them unworthy to receive it. I'm still looking for someone worthy. I might gild a great debt for uh, forging me into the person I am today. I pursue wealth to secure someone's love. Well, I like that one. One day I will return to my guild and prove that I am the greatest artisan of them all. I will get revenge on the evil forces that destroyed my place of business, business and ruined my livelihood. All right, so let's check and see. What do the dice say? The dice say a natural one. So that would be uh, the workshop where I learned my trade is the most important place in the world to me. That just does not sound like much of an adventurer. But if they're in trouble, um, maybe that could be... Hmm. I'm going back and forth on that one, and I pursue wealth to secure someone's love. No, maybe they go hand in hand. Again, I could work with the GM and say, hey, can I kind of blend these two? But because we're on a bit of a time crunch and I don't have my GM here, because I am the GM of my own place, we're just going to go with the roll. Again, maybe that's something where we can have the introduction as, you know, they're kind of gathering up the party. Maybe that's a great place. They're out to improve the workshop by stealing gems and creating the best things in there when something bad happens and the workshop gets attacked by the villain of the story. Who knows? As a GM, this gives me a lot of meat, a lot of opportunity to start looking at how is Alton going to fit into the campaign. What's their driving force? How can I tug at them to make them a center character of the overarching story? What can I either manipulate or burn to the ground to motivate Alton? These are the aspects where it's so important to have these things uh, laid out and shared with your GM. And the next one is the flaw. What flaws do they have? So I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to read them out, and then we'll roll for it, because there are six as well. So I'll do anything to get my hands on something rare or priceless. Oh, I love that one. Uh, I'm quick to assume that someone is trying to cheat me. No one must ever learn that I once stole money from guild coffers. I'm never satisfied with what I have. I always want more. I would kill to acquire a noble title. I'm horribly jealous of anyone who can outshine my handiwork. Everywhere I go, I'm surrounded by rivals. Some of those flaws. Four. I'm never satisfied with what I have. I always want more. So that's how I have to roleplay this character, is with that flaw. So thinking of uh, this character and how I would go through and role play them, I would set out and go with the GM initially what I want. Um, I would set like a, a three goals that Alton is trying to achieve here. Maybe one is uh, a share of the workshop, the guild workshop, right? And then the second one is a secure, um, comfy, massive home. And then the third one is a noble title. I mean, those are all three big goals. And if Alton achieves one, what's the next thing that he's after? Because when he gets 
you know, the first one, he's a share of the guild membership. It's not bringing in as much money as he thought. So how can he grow the business? It should be something that you can continue to develop and build upon. Um, and so I like that. I, I think that's pretty good. Now we want to go through and get into the equipment just so we can make sure that we've got everything correct. And let's look at our martial weapons, 1d6 piercing for our short sword. And our dagger is going to be on the ranged. Well, no, 1d4 piercing if we're using it melee. And our burglar's pack. So let's go through that, and here's what I kind of do, is I wrote it at the top of my equipment list, but I'm actually going to write the items below it. I don't think it's going to show on camera. Let me fold this up a little bit, and then I'll erase the burglar's pack. Um, so this is going to be a backpack. Uh, 1,000 ball bearings. This is going to be 10 feet of string, a bell, uh, five candles, crowbar, hammer, 10 pittance, hooded lantern, which is great because I don't have dark vision. Very important, very important. Uh, let's see, where was I at? Uh, two flasks of oil. And running out of room in here. Running out of room. Generally, I'm, I am not quite this cluttered. Um, Five days rations, uh, water skin, and tinderbox. And 50 feet rope. And then our burglar pack, we can erase off that top. That gives us our equipment. And then, yeah, we are pretty much good to go. So our, uh, initiative. Plus two, and then oh, we got a minus two on our wisdom. Oh, actually, our initiative we are going to be a plus four because of our dex. And then I did not pop on that leather armor. Gosh, almost forgot my leather armor. Now one could argue that because the miniature does not is not wearing the leather armor, we're going to say because it's a guild member, um, it's actually leather armor that is fit nice and tight and secure so that they can wear it uh, below their traveling clothes. So we know that's going to be 11 plus the dex modifier, uh, but which is going to be plus 3, so a 14 armor class. Not too bad considering, not too bad. And then we don't need the spell sheet for this character. Um, let's go through and just finish popping this out. This is Alton, or was it Thorn Gauge? Thorn Gauge. Who 
who is a 20 year old, three foot, 40 pound halfling. Um, eyes on this halfling, we're going to say these are, let's do hazel eyes. Um, a skin, we're going to do, uh, let's do an olive skin. And hair, let's go with black hair. So Alton, here's a bit of backstory. I'm just going to go ahead and let's see, we still got some time. So I'm just going to put um, Alton Thorn Gauge. Was raised by a jeweler's guild. Hoping to impress and um, let's say profit the guild. Alton began stealing gems from another. Guild to increase profits and reduce costs of his own work. Um, Alton hoping to become a head member of leadership own a fancy comfy home and be titled as nobility continues to raid gem shops to bolster his jewelry and jewel encrusted um, wares. So it doesn't quite call yet why he is going on an adventure. That's something that as I'm, as a, as a player, I would want to pull from my GM. And, you know, what is the adventuring, uh, you know, campaign and setting look like? What's the story? Because it, depending on the location, there's so many things that you really have to think about. But this is good enough that we could drop this character into any game and play him very well. So Alton, let's talk just a little bit. We've still got some time. So let's talk a little bit about how I would paint this miniature for Alton. I already know that I would start out with an olive skin uh, with some hazel eyes and then black hair. For the clothes, the breeches, I would probably keep pretty Standard, I would have them look like either blue jeans or uh, like um, brown pants, just like almost corduroy style, because these are traveling clothes. These are things that need to be durable, so they're going to be a heavier material. I'm not going to make them like silken pajamas or anything at all. And then the shirt, probably the same way. I would do it uh, like a linen color, and I might put a little bit of decoration along this edge here. Um, just to show that there's some value there, some money spent on there. I would do a reddish brown uh, belt for both of those belts. Um, and just again to show the that kind of uh, higher end quality. It's not going to be a very thin, worn belt. It's going to be a thick, heavy, um, heavy leather belt with gold buckles on both of them. Uh, the pouch I would try to do uh, almost like 
possibly like a deer skin or an elk skin, so a lighter colored leather. Uh, the hair on the feet, I would match the hair on the head, of course the feet and hands, also olive to match. For the sword, I would just do this as a non-metallic metal with a brass or a gold pommel and hilt. Um, and the handle, you can see a little bit there. There I might put in some type of an accent color. We've got already lots of blues or browns in here. Um, so I might pop something in there that's going to have a little bit more color. Um, maybe that's going to have uh, something... F oh, you know what? I would do the bottom part as a gem. That's what he steals. Yeah, I would do the bottom part as a gem and have that pop of color be there. I would do that probably as a um, emerald or maybe amber. Oh, amber would be kind of cool. Um, and then for the, he is wearing gloves, so his hands actually wouldn't show. Those I would show uh, like a darker glove, almost a, a black colored glove. So they look kind of like driving gloves. Maybe a super um, dark with worn knuckles kind of thing because he uses them when he's thieving. And then for the cloak and cape, there I would keep it simple, uh, but the question is, do you do it leather or fabric? Well, this has got a lot of flow to it. You see all the different flow to it. So I would actually keep this um, as fabric and not paint it like leather. I would say I would be tempted to do something almost like a, uh, some type of a, I'm trying to think of like a, a digital camo print or something, you know, something that's going to be a little bit more hard to see. Um, and then on the inner parts where you can see it folded over, have it be a different color with decoration. And the thought is that this cloak is actually reversible. And this upper part, maybe I do that as leather because it doesn't have quite as much flow as the lower part. So that could go into the leather armor. And then when he flips it around, it's on the inside of the cloak um, when it's reversed. So almost a, like a reversible cloak. I don't know. Just a thought. It would have a lot of story behind it. But yeah, I might paint this in grays, actually. Um... Because he's going out at night, it's an urban setting. I mean, you want to go black. I would probably do, if I were going to do black, highlight it with grays. Or highlight it with blues. That could be pretty cool. So Alton, our Havlin Rogue. We've got built. We talked about how we would paint the miniature for on-the-table use. And he is ready to go. Now, timing-wise, we did take just about an hour to build that character. But again, we were going slow. We were talking a lot in detail. Uh, you can see there was quite a bit of time that was taken into thinking about some of the things. It doesn't have to take that long. However, the more time you spend on building your character, the more robust that character is going to be thinking about how you're going to tie them in to your play style, how you're going to be role-playing them at the table. Remember, it is a role-playing game. And then getting details that the GM can use to interweave their story into the overarching story to be able to draw elements from and give you those bonds in story to really allow you to explore character backstory and character development Super important. I can't stress it enough. Make sure that personality part you're paying a lot of attention to. And again, the goal for this is to not create a character and then have to search for a cool miniature to represent it on the table. While a lot of people do that, we get in the habit of doing that, there are a bajillion different miniatures out there. Go to your local game store, go online, and just search miniatures. Now, mine obviously that I've been using 
predominantly have been Reaper miniatures, but there are a lot of manufacturers out there. I highly recommend you find a miniature that you think is cool and build a character off of that miniature because it's going to give you a lot of inspiration as you're developing that character, being able to actually see what that character is going to be like on the table. Could be something where facial expression alone is going to drive you in certain directions and make you think certain things. So I strongly urge you, go to your local game shop and just shop their walls of minis. Look in their price reduced bins, see if they've got cool minis. Go online, look for pre-made miniatures that you can get a good look at and kind of look at and see. Look for something that's going to fit your budget. Go off price point, um, whether you go high to low or low to high. Find a miniature, and uh, I'd love to hear your stories on building a cool character all based off of a miniature. So we're going to keep doing this week in and week out. Next week we're going to do another PC, and then we'll switch it again to a monster for the GM side. I'm going to try to do it two to one ratio, so two player characters to one GM. My goal eventually is to paint these miniatures and use these as giveaways with the miniature and the character sheet that we create online and send it out to somebody as a prize. I don't know if we'll get there. My goal is to have a stack of maybe 10 of these before we start doing that. Gives me some time to prep and develop and hopefully build up a good enough following. So if you enjoy the show, if it's something that you think is cool, make sure, give us a follow. We're not asking for subscriptions. We just would love to grow our audience of followers. Check us out on all of our social medias. And, of course, take that inspiration by the horns. Let us know where your inspiration will lead you. Until our next show, which, make sure you check out our updated schedule, is going to be on Friday. Make sure that you are checking that out as we go through and do some reviews of some cool products. So we'll see you on Friday's show and then painting on Saturday. Have a fantastic evening and keep a roll on those dice even when they only give you an 8 as your high score. Have a great evening.